All right, coming at number 10 now, we have the Mazda Raceway. This is a paved road racing track in California that was built in 1957, and for some strange reason, it's totally blurred out. I tried searching around for the reason behind this, and I couldn't seem to find anything. It doesn't appear to be anything to do with the military, it's just a normal racing track. Or is it? Why would Mazda want us to not see the track from above? And why would Google agree to this? Coming in at number 9 is the Arctic Landing. So okay, bit of fake advertisement, this one isn't located in the Arctic, it's actually located in Antarctica. Not the same thing, you guys. Either way, Russian UFO enthusiast Valentin Degretev claims he found an alien crash site in Antarctica. There seems to be a saucer-shaped dent in the snow like the flying saucer landed on its side and just went straight through the snow. I hope you got what I meant when I did that. <laughs> I mean, I need to speculate and offer other explanations like, okay, is the ice breaking apart underneath there and that's what's causing the slit? But I feel like that's far-fetched, but then again, so is a flying saucer. But it is peculiar and it's surrounded by ridges and flat snow, so it's just a big unexplainable anomaly. I don't know guys, is it just a random slit? Is it an alien saucer? I don't really know. At number 8 we have the Martian Twins. Now during the Kofun era in Japan, which was during 300 to 538 AD, they used to build Kofun tombs. And these tombs were for people of the ruling class and they were shaped like keyholes most commonly and surrounded by water. That's all well and good, but alien hunters spotted a mound on Mars that looked identical to one specific Kofun era tomb. Now they fully believe that the suspicious similarities between both features is evidence that Martians settled on Earth centuries ago after a catastrophic unknown event forced them to leave the red planet. They ended up building a similar structure on Earth and then going back to Mars when it was finally appropriate. But again, I feel like this whole theory is speculation. How do we know what this catastrophic unknown event was and if it even happened? If aliens have the technology to travel to another planet and set up camp there, surely they could have evaded whichever terrible thing happened on Mars? Is that too much to ask? I don't think it is. I don't think my expectations are that high, you guys. Plausible. Filling on number 7 slot is the alien base. Now back in April of this year, a few UFO hunters were searching Google Earth for some sus looking sh and boy did they find it. There's this really weird 500 meter long object off the coast of Antarctica that from the top looks like an iceberg but literally isn't. The left of it is oddly straight and the top has vertical ridges on it making it not look like an iceberg at all. According to UFO sightings hotspot it doesn't fit the description of an iceberg and I quote, I'm not an iceberg expert but this object is really peculiar and looks like a vessel disguised as an iceberg. I have to fully agree with you honestly, I feel like the Aliens were probably like, hey, just cover the top in an ice sheet. These dumb humans won't notice the difference. But we did. We are on to you. Dumb humans. May have taken us a few years, but we got there. Now at number 6 is bad parking. I just found this one hilarious because alien life is meant to be so advanced and ahead of us. And I look at this image and I'm like, were you drunk driving? Like this is shockingly bad. Now the image was located by YouTube channel Secure Team 10 who found it crash landed in a restricted part of Arizona with a white blacked out car parked next to it. CIA perhaps? Probably. Now the flying saucer looks really old fashioned if anything, like it's not slick or thin and I'm pretty sure it landed upside down which is what's really funny to me. Like how do you mess up a landing that badly? Maybe the aliens decided to take one of the old ones for a ride and then didn't realize how outdated it was and then boom, disaster, flipped it over. You're gonna be grounded when you get back to your planet. Coming in at number 5 is the slit. In the very remote British territory of South Georgia, a really strange thing was found in the snow and no we're not talking about my ex but wow he keeps popping up in these videos. Now alien hunting YouTube channel Secure Team 10 found a slit in the snow that they claim has all the signs that point to a UFO crash landing. It has the exact trajectory of an angular flying object that came to a screeching halt in the snow. Now the imprint isn't a plane otherwise we would have known, it's not military craft or we would have known, and the crash is too narrow and small to be anything other than an alien craft. But I mean I don't really know, I think calling every weird slit in the snow an alien crash landing is a bit of a cop out, but alien hunters clearly know better than I do, so I'ma just leave it to the experts. At number 4 is the flying saucer. Clearly you can tell I'm running out of title ideas and I mean there's only so many different ways you can say spaceship okay? Either way YouTube channel secure team found an image on Google Earth that they believe is a flying saucer. Located in the south pole the circular object in question is sticking out of a mountain amongst the snow. But the rocky areas around it are quite rigid and randomly cut whereas this object is oddly round and like 
perfectly rounded that. And I can't zoom in enough to tell if it's just a round cut of water that's randomly there or if it's actually alien aircraft. But since I've never seen alien aircraft, I don't even know even if I could zoom in, would I know? Who knows? Now there's like a thinner outline inside the actual outline of the round bit which seems unnatural to me, like there's no way that bit's natural. Has to be man made or or alien made. But I feel like zooming in more is necessary to get an actual conclusion and alas, I can't do that. And I'm definitely not gonna go to Antarctica just to find out. But you can, and let me know if you do. Filling our number three slot is the floating island. Now located in Argentina, back in 2016, UFO sightings daily fully believed this floating island was the entrance to an alien base. On Google Maps, it looks like a random crescent was cut out of the greenery in the area. Like there's no other shape like that found nearby or on the continent or in the country for that matter. The island actually moves and rotates in a circle, and considering Argentina has had many UFO sightings over the years, it could could be possible that aliens have their base underneath this island. Never say never. Now the slit could easily fit a 100 meter UFO through it and no one has actually gone and explored the water beneath the floating island. I think it's just really weird how there's like an oddly perfect circular island that magically got cut out by mother nature and oh it also rotates and moves. Like nah honey that's not mother nature that is alien nature. Now at number 2 are the skid marks. Now, in June of this year UFO theorist Scott Waring found what he believed to be an alien crash site in Antarctica because apparently that's the go to landing pad for most aliens on this list. It's located towards the north of the island off the coast of another little island, if you know what that means because I don't since I'm not an Antarctica expert. Now on the image he claims part of the UFO's wing is folded up and its concave area is severely dented. There are evident burn skid marks trailing behind the craft and the craft itself looks to be made of some metallic material. The craft is apparently 96 meters long while the trail it left behind it is nearly 450 meters long so clearly it was a really rough landing. And finally at number 1 is the debated. So even though this one has been debunked I put it as number one because it was so widely believed to be an alien crash landing site for so long before, you know, it obviously wasn't. Now the satellite image shows a mountainous island off the coast of Antarctica. Now in the smooth snow, there's a block of something that's crashed into the snow, leaving a long deep trail behind it. I mean, and I get the allegation, it's narrow, and how often do things really crash into Antarctica unless it's a UFO? From this list, clearly, so I get why the thought was there. And the trail is quite long, but if you follow the trail back, you'll see the trail goes back to a mountain peak and a bunch of disturbed snow and how many times did I just say trail in the last 30 seconds? Now people believe an avalanche occurred and debris was what the object was or perhaps it was a trapped submarine, I don't really know. Either way, debunked, finally. Starting off this countdown we have the half moon schooner yacht. This was a German racing yacht that was built in 1908 Germany. The yacht was built as a wedding present for Count Gustav von Buglen und Halbach. Yeah, that was his full name. What a mouthful. Anyways, the yacht was eventually seized by the British during World War II and resold to become a US cabaret boat during the Prohibition era. In fact, its original name was the Germania, but when it resold, it got named the Half Moon. But the yacht ended up sinking during a terrible storm in 1930. Now it lies at the bottom of the ocean near Key Biscayne, Florida. In fact, now it's a popular dive spot for snorkelers and divers. In our ninth spot today, we have KFC. Now, this one is a little funny. So you know how Google Maps automatically censors out any person's face that they end up capturing? Well, they ended up censoring every single KFC. And that's because of Colonel Sanders' face. Google system detected it as a real person. Well, it is a real person. And it got blurred. So the Colonel's face is censored on all KFC buildings and signs. In our eighth spot, we have the Army Logistics Command Headquarters. Located in Taiwan, the Army Logistics Command Headquarters building is one of various military sites across Taiwan that has been blurred out on Google. And I'm sure you all can understand why. They do so for security reasons. Google often blurs out military bases or buildings if they are considered important to a country's security. Like I said, this is just one of the many military buildings blurred out by the Taiwan government and by Google. But in 2019, an update was done by Google and it resulted in a number of these bases being revealed to the public accidentally. The blurring was accidentally removed and people could see the buildings from all sorts of angles. People saw the military bases layout, building structures, and the locations of missile launchers. Good job, Google. But don't worry, 
Now it's fixed. In our seventh spot, we have Tontaco National Park, Chile. Now, why would a national park be censored on Google? Literally no one knows. So this is a privately owned nature reserve. Now on Google Maps, you could see it from afar, but as soon as you zoom in closer, it doesn't do anything. It just looks like a green blob. So why would they censor this area? Well, some say it's because of the fact that it's home to several endangered animal species, whereas others believe that this place is home to animals that aren't supposed to exist. Imagine unicorns actually do exist and they're just in this area, or like the Bigfoot wild. In our sixth spot, we have the single square. In El Hito, Spain, there is this random square that was censored among the roads and plantations. Now this site wasn't always censored. It became censored in 2007 when just a blur was added to the square and many people were wondering why all of a sudden it was censored. Well, some say that's because a helicopter pad was placed there, so it was censored to hide that, whereas others think that there's a missile silo placed there. As of 2013, the censor, I believe, has been removed, and now all there is to see is an arid stretch of land. But what was going on there for seven years when it was censored? That's my question. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with Orsprung Park. Located in the Netherlands, this is a mysterious building that, you guessed it, is censored. But what's weird is that this is the only property in a row of houses that is censored. Why is that house alone censored and not all of them? In older images from Google Earth, the building appears to be covered with a white box. Nowadays, if you search it, it's just a pixelated green and brown area. Again, no one knows why this area is blurred. When you check Google Street View, you can see that it's a brick building, but on Google Earth, you see nothing. Now, it could just be the homeowner wants privacy. Who knows? In our fourth spot, we have North Korea. And of course, North Korea is on this list. I mean, hello, the whole country itself is one big secret. It's no shocker that sections of the country are blurred out. Now, the area that is blurred is along the country's western shore. So people have thought that they are hiding something there. Theory one is that that's where they do weapon tests or that's where they have missiles or other weapons stored. Theory two is that that's where they are conducting a secret military project. Very vague, we don't know what the project is. Again, it's North Korea, so we really don't know what they're up to or why that particular area is blurred out. In our third spot, we have Marcoule nuclear site. Located in France, this site was first constructed in 1952. Now, we've done a number of these Google Earth videos, so at this point, you should realize that most nuclear facilities are blurred out, mostly because these nuclear sites were caught doing illegal things with their nuclear waste, like dumping it into the ocean. Now, this one hasn't done that, but in 2011, it was the center of an explosion. One person was killed, four were injured, one was severely injured. So, I mean, I think you can guess as to why an atomic energy site using uranium and plutonium oxides is censored by the French government, especially after that explosion in 2011. In our second spot today, we have Sandy Island, aka the island that exists, but it doesn't exist. Now, this one comes with a little backstory. This island was discovered by Captain Cook, yes, Captain Cook, not Hook, during his explorations around Australia in the late 1700s. But now, it seemingly disappeared. Back in the 19th century, Sandy Island was noted on a number of maps and nautical charts. It was said to be located in the South Pacific. It was located between Australia and New Caledonia. But it's no longer there. On Google Maps, if you enter the island's coordinates, all you see is a faint outline of what looks like a long, thin island. But there's no landmass in sight. And in our number one spot today, we have Moroa Island. Located in French Polynesia, this island was first used for nuclear testing in 1966 by France. These tests took place until 1996. That's when the French president shut down the facility. Turns out that Greenpeace found these tests were polluting the waters as far as Peru and New Zealand. In fact, many locals in Tahiti have claimed that they have been affected by the radiation from these tests. Nowadays, the island is off limits to visitors and is guarded by French forces, which is probably why half of the island is blurred out on Google Maps. Or it's because they are still doing these new nuclear tests. We may never know. Starting off this countdown, we have Snow Saddle. Snow Saddle is a major mountain peak of the Himalayas in Nepal. But if you try to view it from Google Earth, you'll see that the whole area is blacked out, which is obviously suspicious. Why is a mountain peak blurred? 
what's going on there that has Google blurring it. To this day, no one knows for sure. But of course, there are a number of theories. One theory is that the Nazis had secret expeditions to the Himalayas and found a UFO base in that area. Sounds crazy, right? Well, there have been a number of UFO sightings in that area, so maybe it is a top secret UFO base. Who knows? We don't know. Coming into number 9, we have the Copper Scroll. The Copper Scroll is one of the Dead Sea Scrolls found in the 1950s, but written between 50 and 100 AD. The Copper Scroll has details in which swathes of valuable items can be found. Luckily for treasure hunters, description of where the treasure can be found has been given, but unluckily, as nearly 2000 years have passed, the landscape has changed somewhat since then. Trying to find out where the treasure is using a 2000 year old map? Well, it will send you insane. Here are some of the clues. In the ruin which is in the valley of Accor under the steps leading east, 40 long cubits, a chest of silver and its vessels with a weight of 17 talents. You what mate? Coming in at number 8 we have the map to the Dutch mine. I will take you down to the old Dutch mine. I feel like we need a remix. Actually though, it's no laughing matter. Legend has it that a literal gold mine was found in the mid 1800s in the Arizona Suspicion Mountains. The only issue is, it's cursed. Now known as the Massacre Ground, the Perlata family was said to have initially found the treasure but were killed by the Apash people who then hid the treasure again, thought to be worth millions. Since then a German immigrant, Jacob Walt, settled in Arizona during the gold rush years in the later part of the 1800s. Walt then spent his life investigating the mines, claiming that he found the treasure. He made several maps to the mine with X marking the spot. Now X was in the middle of a heart, but to this day, nobody's ever found the treasure. In fact, many have died trying. This has led a lot of people to the suggestion that the mines or the maps could be cursed. Following the map could lead to your demise. Between 1955 and 1977, seven people were found dead trying to find the treasure. More recently, Recently, Jesse Cappen was convinced that he could find it. He went out searching three times and never returned from his final trip in 2009. Coming into number seven, we have Frisland. Want a trip to Frisland? Sure you do. We all love a good adventure. But sorry, where is it? No worries, I'll give you a map. Cool, see you never. It seems in 1558 a Venetian chap named Niccolo Zeno invented the island just because he thought it was there. Why? Well because he thought that his ancestors discovered it 200 years prior. It seems that Zeno had actually got confused with a part of Greenland and placed it as the site of a separate island the size of Iceland which is pretty sizeable. Scarily, Zeno generated a very popular map and the Phantom Islands then appeared on other maps for the next 100 years. Some people even tried to find the island for themselves but were sorely disappointed. Coming into number 6 we have the Fen Treasure Map in the Rocky Mountains. What do you do when you're diagnosed with cancer? In 1988, author Forrest Fenn was convinced that he was going to die so he thought up an idea to bury a bronze chest filled with treasure. Now it contained gold, red, coins, gems and jewels as well as his autobiography. However, he actually survived his illness which is great for him and then he decided to bury the treasure in two He then decided to bury the treasure in 2010 and contained a poem with clues in his 2013 book. His book Too Far Too Well actually contained a pull out map of the area the treasure is buried in in the American Rocky Mountains. The thing is though the map might lead you to your death. It seems that once again people have died searching for the hidden chest. Now most of them were men in their 50s. I don't know why but in the pursuit of treasure it's often the men that die. Interesting. Coming into number 5 we have the ghost map. This is one Jon Snow who certainly did not know nothing. A double negative Rebecca? Yes. So the OG Jon Snow played an important role in the history of medicine. When cholera struck London between 1848 and 1853, disease was a big killer, but nobody yet knew how it was spread. Their best theory was through miasma, which means bad smells. In actuality, cholera comes from poor sanitation, it's a waterborne illness, so I guess they were kind of onto something, but it's bacteria, not smell. Good old Jon Snow, a doctor and anethiologist, 
scientist was interested in learning more about the spread of the disease. He was curious as to why sewer workers and people who worked close to the river weren't actually showing a high likelihood of catching the disease because it smelled bad there so they should be getting sick. He made a map of people who contracted cholera and he found a large concentration down one particular street. He found the people from the street got their water from one particular well, and he found this pump was close to a leaking cesspit which contaminated the water. His map was called the ghost map, and he discovered that cholera was a waterborne illness. He was the first person to do so. Jon Snow and his ghost map have become celebrated as one of the first studies of epidemics. I really love the game Pandemic, so this is pretty fascinating to me. Coming into number four, we have the monster map. It is a map. It is a monster map. Let's look at the map. Here be monsters, apparently. Check out this map from 1539. Geographic meets the supernatural as monsters appear between islands and continents. It seems like adding monsters to maps was the done thing in the medieval and renaissance times. The reason was that there was still a lot of mystery back then. People didn't really know what was out there, so the monsters suggested that these areas were unknown and possibly dangerous. They were warning signs. I have to say though, some of them look kind of cute and sweet. Sweet monsters. Ah. Coming into number three, we have the world's oldest map. We have come a long way since the first ever map, and I have to say, even now, that my Google Maps has the uncanny ability to get me lost. Imagine trying to navigate with this, though. Hello, meet the world's oldest map. This map is thought to be from ancient Babylonia and dates back to the 6th century BCE when the Babylonians thought that there were just eight mystery regions beyond their own. It's carved into a stone. I mean, not only is this map way out of date, but like, what does it mean? Coming into number two, we have this Uber map. Whenever I get an Uber, my driver always takes a murderous, vibey turn down a side road near my house. Apparently, this is because the Uber map system is somewhat flawed. But I'm actually just gonna go all out there and say it's actually pretty scary. Case and point here, it seems that in March 2018, an Uber driver took a very wrong turn when reading their map in San Francisco. They actually winded up driving down a flight of stairs. The driver ended up stuck on the stairs for hours. There are images courtesy of the KRON4 news Twitter, and oh my god, can you even imagine if this was your Uber and the driver's map reading got you I don't know, driven downstairs. I'd be utterly terrified. Nobody was hurt, luckily, but how does this happen? You hear stories about people using their GPS and turning into rivers and drowning, like, are we not using our eyes and brains? Maps, dangerous. Finally, coming into number one, we have the map to El Dorado. Do you wanna get lost and probably die of exhaustion and or dehydration? Then follow the road to El Dorado. El Dorado was noted by explorer Sir Walter Raleigh and is said to be a city of gold submerged somewhere near Lake Guatavita in Colombia. Raleigh claims to have discovered the city on his trip to Guyana and wrote in great detail about its treasures. Coming in at number 10, we have the Lou Map. The Lou Map is a collection of Masonic symbols. It looks kind of Illuminati esque. The rumor has it that the map is of Nazi origin. The story goes that the map points to geographical caches of gold buried in the United States of America. This is kind of where things get wild too. It seems that the Nazis smuggled the gold in in order to sell it and then crash the United States economy, stopping them from entering the Second World War. Theories, theories. Apparently, Franklin Roosevelt was onto them and then signed the Gold Reserve Act in 1934 to prohibit private possession of gold busted. Somehow smuggling gold back out of the country was harder than getting it in. The Lou map was created to locate the gold, but the German spies sent to retrieve it got busted by the FBI. Busted. CIA codebreakers could not figure out the map. Many literally drove themselves insane trying to do so. The story is somewhat believable as it is known that Nazi officers did hide treasures around the world. Moving on to number nine, we have Baker Lake. Located in none of it, Canada, Google Earth is letting you see none of it. Get it? Like none of it? <laughs> Sorry, I love my buns. So if you look it up on Google Maps, it's weird because you see just a black strip covering a large area near the lake. What's it blocking? Again, we don't know for sure, but we have some crazy conspiracies. One theory is that the strip is concealing extraterrestrial beacons that help the navigation of the crafts, or that it's a 
craft landing strip. I don't know. They also say that this area would be perfect for the beacons since snow creates a powerful electromagnetic field that helps send a better signal. What do you think though? Let me know in the comments below. In our eighth spot, we have the Pacific Northwest Blur. Here is a view of the area close to the Washington, Oregon border. And would you look at that? There's a random patch blacked out. To this day, no one knows what that is. But something is there that Google doesn't want us to see. In fact, some people believe that it is a HARP site or H A A R P. HARP is said to be a military program that weaponizes weather and causes natural disasters like floods, earthquakes, droughts, you get it. Now, some people have actually traveled to that area to see what's up, but unfortunately haven't been able to find anything. Kind of suspicious. Like, what does Google know? Though we don't know. A whole lot, that's what. In our seventh spot, we have 2207 Seymour Avenue. This is the address to a home located in Cleveland, Ohio. A home in which a horrific crime took place. A crime that people don't like to talk about. From 2002 to 2004, Adriel Castro kidnapped three young women. Michelle Knight, Amanda Berry, and Georgina De Jesus. He kept them captive in his home until 2013 when Amanda Berry escaped with her daughter and contacted the police. Police came to his house and rescued the other women. This house has since been blurred on Google Maps due to the horrific crimes that took place inside. In fact, it was given the name, the House of Horrors. But in 2013, it was actually demolished to help the victims move on from their traumatizing past. In our sixth spot, we have Valencia City. Located in the Philippines, Valencia City is one of the largest and most populated cities in the province of Budkanan. It's home to over 190,000 people people. It's even a popular tourist spot. But if you want to find it on Google Earth, you can't. The whole city is just blurred out. This was apparently done under government orders. Valencia City is home to their government's headquarters. It's said to house a top secret missile defense program. Others say that they do missile testing there, but that hasn't been proven, so we really don't know. It's just weird that the whole city is blurred out, not just a single area. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with Amchitka Island. Located in Alaska, sections of this island are blurred out and no one really knows why this is. But it may have to do with the nuclear testing that once took place there. From the 1950s to the 1970s, this island was the site of US underground nuclear testing. Nowadays, they are running tests to see if the island has any radioactive leakage there. If there isn't, then in 2025, it could become a wildlife reserve. But again, why is half the island blurred out? Maybe that's the section where the nuclear testing took place. But why is it still blurred? A lot of people think that the military is doing some suspicious illegal activities there. We just don't know what. Moving on, at number four, we have Vokel Air Base. Located in the Netherlands, we have the Vokel Air Base, which is a military air base used by the Royal Netherlands Air Force. According to former Dutch Prime Minister, there are 22 US nuclear bombs being stored in bunkers of this airspace, which is one of the many reasons as to why it appears pixelated on Google Earth. You got thermonuclear bombs, all the way to bombs that are said to be four times powerful as the ones used on the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Now, for the longest time, the place was just rumored to have nukes. It wasn't known for sure. That was until 2013 when the prime minister let it slip. He said, and I quote, I would never have thought those silly things would still be there in 2013. I think they are an absolutely pointless part of a tradition in military thinking. In our third spot, we have the mysterious Russian site. Located in the Siberian tundra, close to the city of Egvikinot. I know I said that wrong. I literally looked up the pronunciation, but there is nothing out there, so I apologize. Egvino, Egvikno. I'm so sorry. Anyways, the area is blurred out on Google Earth, and no one knows why. I've been saying that a lot this video, but it's true. No one knows why. But it didn't always appear like this. At one point, they had edited the satellite imagery. They cut out a section around Egmont, that place I don't know how to say, and pasted it over whatever they wanted to blur. They thought it would make it less obvious. But apparently on Russian maps, they have the area blurred with a black box. 
So what's going on in that area? Some say it's harp again, others say there's a large gold deposit in that area so they don't want people finding that out. Others say it's a ballistic missile testing site. Coming in at number 2 we have the murder scene. Google Earth is a snitch y'all, ok? A couple of years ago they caught a murder on camera. It shows a dark figure standing by a body laying down on the ground by some abandoned train tracks. That's all we know. Obviously due to it being disturbing in nature, they don't want people seeing it. And in our number one spot today we have the poor donkey. Now this has to be one of the funniest yet saddest things caught on google earth slash maps. So you know how they have that van with the camera that drives along and it just snaps photos like every second in every direction? Well while going along it captured a donkey at the side of the road. Seconds later, if you click down the road and you turn back, the donkey's still there, just now laying on the floor. It had been hit by the Google Earth truck. It's pretty sad. Rest in peace, donkey. But that doesn't look too good on the company if they're going around and hitting and killing animals. Just saying. Starting off this countdown, we have Alexi Miller's house. Alexi Miller is the chairman of Russia's largest company and world's biggest natural gas producer. If you try and look up his house on Google Maps, well, good luck. It is completely blurred out. In fact, we don't even have an image of it. And that's due to privacy reasons and safety concerns. I mean, this guy isn't everyone's biggest fan. Being that wealthy and big of a public figure, you don't know who's going to come for you. Now, I mentioned this before, but prisons are blurred out to prevent people or prisoners from breaking in or out of the facility. Google Earth literally shows you the entire layout of the place. So Miller probably has similar reasoning as to why he wants this place blurred. Someone could easily use Google Earth to figure out the best way to break into this dude's house. It would also show if he has cameras around his premise and where. So yeah, it's a little revealing. All right, getting even more serious now. At number 9 we have HARP. Some of you guys might remember HARP from our other videos. It's a US Air Force research facility with many theories around the work done there including experiments to control the weather. Regardless of if that's true or not, their base in Alaska is blocked out on Google Maps. You can only really see some weird copy and pasted brownish blocks. Now sure there might be something very normal going on there but this is also fuel for the conspiracy theorists. Next up at number 8 now we have Nordvik Anzi. This is a small part of a town in the Netherlands that has the strangest blur on it that I've seen so far. If you could see underneath that blur, you would see the ESTEC or the European Space Research and Technology Center. Now they obviously do important space work there, but why would we not be allowed to see it from above? One theory is that it's hiding rocket technology from rival space agencies. Next up at number 7 now, we have the Michael Aff building. This building is in Utah and although it might sound like it belongs to some nice guy called Michael, it's a bit more serious than that. It's actually an area used by the US Army to test bio and chemical weapons. If you try and view it on Google Maps, you just get this weird whited out area with swirls and square patterns. Whatever crazy chemical technology is being concocted there, we are not supposed to see the details. Alright, moving on to number 6 now, we have the KFC Colonel. We've done a few serious ones so far, so here's a little bit of a weird but very real one to lighten the mood. The KFC Colonel's face is automatically blurred on every every Google Maps image. Now I'm sure you guys might be able to find one, but it must have been manually unblurred. You see, this is because Google's face recognition technology automatically blurs out any face it finds for privacy reasons. It got a little bit carried away and blurred the colonel's face on the front of every single KFC. That's about 19,000 of them. The Google employee who has to manually fix all of that will be busy for quite a while. Alright, next up at number 5 now we have Princeton Road. In English town of Stockton on Tees, there is a street called Princeton Road with only a few houses, and one of them is mysteriously blurred out. Some celebrities do this for privacy reasons, but the person who lives there said that they have never requested that Google blur out their home. Ironically, whoever was trying to hide something about this house has earned it a lot more attention because of the mysterious blur. Alright, moving on to number 4 now, we have Grunard Island. This small island off the coast of the UK is less than a mile wide and was where British scientists tested deadly anthrax bombs during the Second World War. They tested them on 60 sheep, all of whom died within 60 days. Ever since then, the area has been a no go zone, you're not allowed to go there, and the blurred Google Maps image reflects its mysterious nature. Alright, at the number 3 spot now, we have the Garden of Gethsemane. Any Christians watching this video might recognize this as the place where Jesus was said to.
said to have spent his last ever night before his crucifixion. It's also said to be the place where his mother Mary was buried before ascending to heaven. It's also totally blurred out on Google Maps. Why would this be? It's a very famous pilgrimage site, you can go there yourself, it's not hidden away at all, so why is it hidden from above? Very strange indeed. Alright next up at number 2 now we have the secret city. This one is actually so secret that I couldn't even find where it was on Google Maps. I had to rely on other people's screenshots of it. The secret city is a blurred out area of Google Maps deep in Russia's Siberian tundra. Now it was thought that nobody lived in that area, but information has leaked out over the years that in 1986 the Soviet Union sealed off dozens of secret cities with over a million people living in them. They attached strange code names to them like Tomsk 7 and Arzamas 16, and some people believe this ominous brown blob on Google Maps is the hidden view of one of these cities. And finally now at number 1 we have Mururoa Atoll. The world knows about this small Pacific island because for 33 years from 1966 to 1996 France tested nuclear bombs there. They dropped 193 of them on this small island to see the effects and fine tune their design. The result was incredible environmental damage leaving the place radioactively contaminated. Perhaps that's why France doesn't want you to see it as the place is just one thin blur on Google Maps. Well. Starting off with number 10 is the underwater base. Now, Argentine researcher Marcelo Igazusta found what he believes to be an underwater alien base. The object is 8.5 miles long and it seems to be a pyramid of some kind. It's located right off the coast of Mexico near the ancient Aztec and Mayan pyramids, which could be coincidental or totally random. Since this pyramid has an 8.5 mile base, that catapults it into being the biggest pyramid in the world. Forget Egypt, humans could have never built something something like that, especially underwater, so Marcelo believes only aliens could have accomplished it. I mean, cut us some more slack, we're better than that. He believes either the base was there from before or an alien craft landed in the water and was built to do so and they just never left. In at 9, the SS Mahano. The SS Mahano actually has quite the interesting story. Originally a passenger ship, during World War I, New Zealand converted the vessel into a floating hospital of sorts. After the war, though, it was returned to a passenger ship, which in my mind is kind of freaky. Like, like, yeah, this is a passenger ship now, but it used to house hundreds of wounded soldiers. Totally worth the ticket price. But I'm guessing the whole floating hospital thing kind of hurts sales, since the ship was sold to an Osaka shipbreaker company in 1935, who intended to tear it apart for scrap metal. However, the ship never made it to the buyer. A cyclone had severed the tow line connected to the Una, the ship that was doing the towing. You can now see the wreck on Google Earth on the beach of Fraser Island off the coast of Queensland, Australia. There was also a small crew on board that luckily survived, but if the ship was in such a state that it had to be towed, why was there a crew on it? Like maybe it was to maintain the ship or something, but I mean like if it was going to be used for scrap metal anyway, does it really matter? In our it spot today we have Costa Concordia. On January 13th of 2012, the Italian cruise ship Costa Concordia crashed into underwater rocks in shallow waters that they didn't see coming. The impact left damage to the ship and it started to sink. Eventually it capsized completely and sank to the ground. The rescue took a total of six hours and most passengers did make it back on shore. Sadly, 34 people lost their lives in this tragedy. 27 passengers, 5 crew members, and 2 rescue workers. The ship was unsavageable, so it was left on the coast of Giglio Island in Italy, where it sunk. Images of the sunken ship have been captured on Google Earth. There are multiple photos of the ship laying on its side, and over the years you can see the ship become more and more deteriorated. And it's 7 the St. Christopher. The St. Christopher will likely spend the rest of its days, those in, in days in a sense being eternal because it's a ship, in the harbor of Ushuaia in southern Argentina. The ship, as a part of the Land Lease Act, was an American built rescue tugboat that served in the British Royal Navy during World War II. The Navy decommissioned it after the war and sold it to a man in Buenos Aires, Argentina in 1947. It was chartered for salvage operations but ran into engine trouble and rudder damage in the Beagle Channel by Ushuaia. The St. Christopher ran ashore in 1957 and was abandoned with the remaining fuel being drained to prevent an environmental disaster. But not until 2004. Great hustle, gents. Nearly 50 years later, huh? You really got your priorities sorted. I guess I had you looking in the wrong section. How could I be so stupid? I really hope that this, that trend isn't dead when this goes out. It might be.
Coming in at number 6, we have the SS Jasm. This ship holds the title for one of the largest shipwrecks ever seen on Google Earth. The SS Jasm was a Bolivian cargo ferry that sunk on the Wingate Reef off the coast of Sudan. On the evening of December 1st, 2003, this ship sunk and to this day, it is still unclear as to why it sunk. On Google Earth, you can see this big white ship laying on its side in the same position where it capsized. Besides that, the ship remains a mystery. Now it's another popular dive spot for scuba divers and snorkelers. Halfway through into number five, the Garden of Eden. Now, I'm not a religious man per se, but I know the stories. The Garden of Eden was meant to be a utopia. Adam was placed here and told that he could eat from any tree aside from the tree of life and the tree of knowledge. They end up eating from the tree anyway and then are cast out of the garden. Well, in layman's terms at least. But there are many theories or ideas as to where this garden was on Earth. Some think that it wasn't on Earth, but multiple renditions place it in Iraq. One of them specifically claiming Basra as the location of the garden, which only makes this giant vessel off the coast even more intriguing. In the northwest section of Arvind Rood, you can see a capsized ship roughly 150 meters long and just over 50 meters offshore. And apparently, this isn't the only shipwreck in Arvind Rood either. Just the, the only one that you can see, particularly from Google Earth. Coming in at number 4, we have the SS Francisco Morazin. On November 27th of 1960, the SS Francisco Morazin left Chicago and headed out towards Holland. They had 940 tons of cargo aboard the ship. However, they never made it to their destination. By day 2 of traveling, they ran into a wild snowstorm. The wind speed was going 40 miles per hour, and as a result, water was being swept aboard the ship. Not only that, but they couldn't see anything. They were blinded by the snow and heavy fog. With their vision being impaired, they accidentally sailed their ship right into shallow water, trapping them by South Manitou Island. Now, the crew ended up abandoning the ship and it was just left there. The ship's owner never came forward and claimed it, so it was literally left there to rot. You can still see it today, just chilling in Lake Michigan. Getting close to the end, into number three, Skeleton Coast. Skeleton Coast sits just north of Luteritz in Namibia, and was named thanks to the countless whale and sea bones that had once littered the shore, thanks to its whaling history. However, nowadays, it's more so home to the skeletal remains of shipwrecks that are commonly caught ashore by rocks and fog. The 976 mile long, or 1,570 kilometers for the rest of the world, Skeleton Coast is littered with shipwrecks, and that's due to, if you don't mind a little science, when the Atlantic's cold currents mix with the warm air of the Namib Desert, they end up creating a cold, dense fog. The kind that Scooby-Doo would like cut a burger out of using a dead pirate sword and then eat. The burger, not the sword. According to BBC, the British Broadcasting Company, you crazies, the Khoisan Bushmen refer to Skeleton Coast as the land God created in anger, which is a whole other can of worms that I'm not gonna touch. Seems like a fun vacation spot though, if you want to get smitten by Chuck. In our second spot, we have the MS World Discoverer. And sadly, this one did not get to discover the world. The MS World Discoverer was a Danish cruise ship that was constructed in 1974. And for over 25 years, it changed ownership a number of times. That was until one day on April of 2000 when it took its last cruise. It was sailing in the Pacific Ocean when it struck an uncharted reef formation. Thankfully, all the passengers were rescued. The crew sent out a distress signal and a passenger ferry came to their help. All passengers were put on the passenger ferry. Now, before anyone could arrange to save the ship, it was actually ransacked and looted by locals. They then decided that saving the ship would be far too expensive and tough, so it wouldn't be worth it. So, they left it there ever since. On Google Maps, you can see this ship just chilling on its side. And finally, in at number one, the Costa Verde. An avid UFO hunter looking for signs of alien activity on Google Earth believes that he had discovered three new shipwrecks. Scott C. Waring posted his discovery on the website ufosightingsdaily.com, which usually features details of alleged UFO or alien sightings, a website that I didn't know existed until now, but I'm definitely going to have to look it up later. The alien hunter highlighted three dark boat-shaped objects in the shallow area off the coast of Costa Verde, which is a really weird thing to say, but in Mexico. He posted on May 4th, 2017, quote, You know me, always searching for the hidden mysteries of life. Well, today I stumbled upon something that's not a UFO, but is still absolutely amazing due to its size. One wreck, the first on his list, was 138 meters long, which is more than half the length of the Titanic, which you are also able to find on Google Earth, but you have to type in the coordinates to, to where it sunk. You can't actually see the wreck. Here's the coordinates if you want to look it up for yourself. 
should be here somewhere. He also found a 61 meter long ship and a 12 meter long fishing boat in the same area, which makes me think maybe he did find evidence of aliens. Oh.